many uh, systems which may live together in, in that uh, trend to the fiber to the home. So we think, and I think the fiber was designed to become the medium to transmit the, the telecommunication into the home. Uh, but the reality shows that uh, copper network is still pretty good. So that, uh, and at the same time, to replace the copper with fiber is pretty expensive. So there will be a lot of uh, gray areas that probably will last for uh, many years now. So the scope of this presentation is to have a look uh, on the last uh, trends in the market and uh, with a particular focus on what happened in one, a couple of operators in Europe. Well, so we start from Shakespeare a bit. Uh, again, we have a, a question which three potential uh, solution. Actually, this is probably a false question because uh, wireless uh, does not mean that uh, you can get rid of cabling. Wireless is simply means that uh, you will have to connect the antenna somehow. So either this will be copper, either it will be fiber, push us back to this question. So are we going toward a, a complete fiber optic network or, or the copper will stay in between? I think the, the answer is, uh, as Alain said this morning, there are no zero in physics. There is always something you can detect. Also here, the, the solution will be multiple. What, w which are the trends at the moment? Of course, you see that uh, from a solution where uh, the metro network at the moment has been fiber, and this is a fact. We are putting fiber into the metro. The it's the last mile, the access, but, uh, uh, which is still uh, uh, not clear. And again, if you think about the access, a few years ago, we were talking about fiber from the node that was the access network. Now, this portion between the node and the home has been cut and, and continues to be cut and cut in little slice. At the moment, uh, uh, in fact, the curb, uh, the building, the remote node, there is a new definition of the fiber to the remote node, somewhere uh, where I can really jump on the very last drop of, of copper and use it. There is a problem anyway, because if one side, if on, on one side the active equipment manufacturer are really working on the electronics and the protocol of transmission, and they're really, it's amazing how they are able to pack the, the lot of uh, information in something which can re still uh, go all on the copper. On the other end, the copper itself uh, has a limit, which is the attenuation. So the higher you go in frequency anyway, the shorter is going to be the, the distance. And this is something you cannot escape. So you see that even though now you can talk about 100 megabits on copper per second, which was simply inconceivable a few years ago, anyway, you see that you already lose 10% of your per performances after 250 meters. And this will open another point. The single main issue, which is again, uh, linked to the physics is that uh, the existing copper network is made by multi pairs cable. Means cables produced probably up to 40 years ago. Uh, and they were designed to work with kilobits. And now we are talking about gigabits, means that we are moving nine zeros, six zero more, so one million times more. Uh, <coughs> so uh, again, that was a that seemed to be a, a lost war, actually is not, uh, is not the case. Again, the active equipment manufacturer came out with a new story, which is the vectoring. A vectoring is probably something you, have, you, you listen, you read in the, in the specialized literature. But uh, what is this vectoring? I think to explain the vectoring, the one analogy is uh, when you fly, when you, when you probably when you go on an aircraft, uh, you buy, you have bought, uh, or they give you the noise canceling head, headset. How is working a noise cancel? How you can cancel a noise? Uh, to cancel a noise, you need to create the same noise, but with a minus up front. So that you, you need to know which is the noise. You create a, a negative noise. The total is zero. So how, you do, how can you do here? Simply, you need to have a device which is able to read what every single pair is, is disturbing the others, listen back from the other, which is the, the disturb which has been generated and absorbed, and create another disturb 
negative. It's quite tricky as a story. But again, is how it works, because in this way, this is a system to silent uh, the noise uh, of the copper uh, among each other. I don't know if that's been clear enough, but hopefully, yes. What happened? Here is, is even, even uh, clearer. One pair is disturbing other pair, so I need to understand which is the entity of the disturb and come back. This is something that for the VDSL has to be added. So if you already, if you today have a VDSL network and you want to vector, make, make vectoring on VDSL, you need to add another device. While for uh, the future, because the new border, uh, the leading edge of the story is the GFAST, GFAST will have already this vectoring embed. Why you need GFAST? You need GFAST because, as I said, <laughs> The, cop, the optical network is going farther and farther, but sooner, before the end of the, of the line, you still want to, to get the maximum benefit from the, from the, the copper network. Actually, GFAST is something that will work for some tenth of meters. And this is why we, we talk about the distribution points or remote nodes today. So you have a, the network now basically optical up to the building and then you will still be in copper upstairs. So we, when the question was that, uh, more than the question, the, the, the idea was that the, uh, the copper is now working as a fiber because it's working sort of a, uh, as of a dielectric mean because if you are able to cancel the electromagnetic influences, means that uh, basically you are like a fiber. Now. For us, the challenge is to make the fiber working as a copper. And while in one side we are talking about uh, performances, uh, transmission performances, in this case for the fiber we are talking about installation practice. And in fact, we come back to what we saw today, that we are trying to make the fiber easy to touch, easy to handle, and basically to be installed like a copper. We are very close because if you think that now we can really open a cable, take the fiber, I think we are really getting closer to that. And this was a bit to set the scene. In the real life, what happened? Uh, we will go through quite quickly on a choice of Telecom Italia, not because I'm Italian, but because I think they made, a, uh, they set up a, a system which is pretty interesting because it's really scalable. What they are thinking is really to manage the transition as smooth as possible especially from the point of view of, uh, of the expenses. Of course, in Italy there is a very, um, uh, um, let's say there is a, a, a scenario which is uh, pretty much favorable to, to this, because the, this, this loop uh, the, the, from the cabinet to the home uh, is very short. We're talking between 100 and 700 meters, but 700 is really in the extreme situation. On average, we are talking 350. It means that you have a cabinet very close to, to the building. Uh, so I need to apologize for the Italian, but I took this presentation uh, directly. Some, of, some slide is also a bit confidential. In fact, it won't be on your stick. I couldn't change, uh, but I think you can understand. Access network secondary, access network primary. So quite easy. So where we need to watch at the moment, we said that this is copper and we remain. We need to watch in this part. We, they needed to, to update the network in these two main items in the central office, so to create an ODF suitable for the future expansion, as well as working on the cabinet. And as much as possible, they don't want to change this one because this is a lot of money, to uh, quite higher cost. In parallel, I think a wise choice was that uh, on paper, it's easy to make calculation. It's not really easy, but let's say it's easier than... Uh, than, than uh, to, to, to find the things in reality, but the result is not necessarily reliable. In fact, I think the wise story is that they decided to, to choose one city, and luckily it's the one where I live, Milan, to do fiber to the home. And in the remaining part of the territory to do fiber to the cabinet and see how it works. So they learn here, but they give broadband there. So we don't leave all the country waiting that the experiment will end. At the same time, you can give broadband here. And why? Because the main driver here is that the fiber to the cabinet is 70% cheaper in a, from the point of view of the installation. And you save 60 to 70% in time of, uh, 
realization of the network. Something which is, again, quite interesting is the, is the concept uh, I call the concept of the water balls because you see they have a cabinet and they, they, have, uh, they start giving the service to the broadband to 48 customers, now 96 because the, 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 the DISLAM are becoming more compact. So let's say the first 96, you give a VDSL. Means that uh, you feel that in the neighborhood, people is interested on the service. Then it get f f the fidelization is getting better. As soon as you have uh, the 97th user, you take this 96 and you put in fiber to the home. And then you start again with uh, 97 again and so on. So that you don't really need to enlarge this one because the alternative will be to enlarge the cabinet more and more and more and more, which is not uh, feasible. And then uh, this shows how really this can be scalable in the time. They need to do something quickly because until the regulation is not um, clear, this is what can be because there is Telecom Italia, FastWeb is a competitor. As the law says that at the cabinet, the network should be unbundled, everybody will come. But then you start having a family here, the dad, the mom, and the little kid. <laughs> uh, and then you never know where you're going to end up. So this is an important point from the point of view of uh, the regulation. And to finish on the more, uh, let's say, conceptual part, uh, you already understand that uh, to have two cabinets in the street uh, may be an issue because two cabinets means that uh, the law is telling you that uh, operator B, you can use this cable, which is the one of the incumbent. So the incumbent is doing the vectoring here, means that they are measuring what happened. But if there is someone else which is injecting inside other signal, uh, you cannot control them, <laughs> you, are, you are a square one. This is why the vectoring is creating sort of a triangular vectoring. But again, this is a complication. So what's the future? We don't know. This is the final, the landing point. But probably it may happen that you never land here. You will always remain in between. And in the end of the day, I think is what is going to happen here with the NBN stories. Uh, they wanted to do fiber to the home, everything. Then they found that uh, it may be a, an hybrid solution, uh, home mixed, for sure, giving the, trying to give in the maximum. But uh, in between, uh, probably, you will have to step and to use what is available. Uh, just a quick uh, view on the real product. You see that uh, the shape of the element in the, ca uh, in the central office changed a bit. It's not anymore a cabinet, but it's a, a modular system because uh, you remember modular because you want to migrate more and more the users. And so you need to have something which is able to grow depending on the take up. And of course, uh, where you need to manage a couple of topics. One is that uh, the cabinet, if you put a Dislam in a cabinet, you need to put power. So either you call the, the power utility, say you ask the power utility to come to bring the power, which is an enormous cost. Either you try to leverage what you already have. From the central office to the cabinet, you have a lot of pairs. So you can, they selected four pairs to bring power to the cabinet. So they have a remote powering system using four telecom pairs. Of course, they are telecom pairs, so you cannot go too much high with the with a voltage because it has been designed for something different. But then combining the four of them, you can feed the, the DISM. And on the other hand, you need to, ma sorry, you need to manage the, the alternative operators, which, of course, has the right to arrive to your center office and use your network to go. On the side of the cabinet, to avoid to replace them all, uh, they decided to survey 100% of the cabinet in the territory and to check the status because this cabinet, which are copper cabinet, uh, probably were, some of them were installed 30, 40 years ago and they are probably not very often in good condition. So they had to check them all, replace with a metallic shape, able to house uh, what they call the rack sack or, or a top hat uh, item, which will have to contain one side of the remote powering system and the DISLAM, the mini DISLAM, which is here. They are different shape and also 
in some uh, occurrence you may even stay in, uh, in a pit. This is a bit interesting because I think is a, is a system which were seen a, a bit uh, with some suspicion at the beginning, but it's becoming more and more popular, which is the micro trenching. And this one, together with what they call uh, the no dig, which is be basically a tunneling assisted with the radar, uh, the disruption in the street is minimized. So that uh, really the, 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 the permission you need from the local communities are easy to get, and your, uh, and your um, plant is, is rolled out much quickly. Again, even though this has been this uh, discouraged as much as possible, especially in the artistic cities, in, in the historical center, a good part of the distribution anyway is added. Before we finish uh, on that, uh, I will just mention the situation in the UK where British Telecom is also trying to push the solution, an intermediate solution. Uh, they think about fiber to the cabinet as well for different reasons compared to Telecom Italia, but the main one is that uh, British Telecom is coming from the emerging of different companies uh, still in the recent time, so that uh, they spend a lot of time to make their network homogeneous before to approach the, um, the, the access network. But again, for them, the situation is to try to leverage as much as possible the cabinet. Uh, we see that uh, because um, uh, we work very, very, very close with the British Telecom in all the connectivity. Basically, if we see this kind of thing, most of the item, OCR you will see later in another presentation, uh, all the DAX and this kind of products uh, is something that uh, we, we develop with them and is part of our connectivity range. They are coming with a new product, uh, which is uh, an hybrid uh, solution, an hybrid closure where you can really manage the fiber coming from the optical network and then uh, to manage the interface of the DSLAM which will be installed in a pit and then uh, to get to the customer. This is a product that in fact uh, came a bit out of the blue. We were working more on, on things like that because this again is something which is coming from some input from, from uh, BT. And that shows that uh, also they are uh, reviewing a bit the strategy and fiber to the home is not the main solution, but is one of the solutions. So the future, we started with a question, we finished with more or less the same question, uh, because again here, I think the, quest, the, the answer will have to come uh, by, you, by, by you, because uh, depend uh, which is uh, or by the incumbent or by the operator of the different countries because everyone will have to tailor co uh, the solution depending on the beauty of their network, uh, how the network is solid, which is the length of the local loop, all these kind of things. So from our point of view, we are just uh, ready to listen uh, to develop and to support uh, the development of the products. Mm -hmm.